Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Central Illinois Regional Check-In 2481 Roboteers. Wow, I saw the reveal video just a few days ago. Absolutely incredible. You gotta check out this robot. This is some of the best packaging I have seen here in Crescendo uh, so far. We'll be covering a lot of stuff on this. Of course, going through their sizing, how they got to this size, uh, their whole note journey intake all the way through. And man, I love their climber. One of the coolest ones I've seen doing kind of that very almost reminiscent of their 2022 climber, uh, if you remember that as well too. So a lot of great stuff with this. Let's learn more about Roboteers and what they have to bring Crescendo coming up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Andrew, we gotta talk about the packaging on this robot. This is so much in such a small size. Talking about why it was important for you to go uh, with the size, how big are you actually? And then uh, any of the uh, general uh, challenges to try to get everything into this packaging? Yeah, so currently right now we are 22 by 22 frame perimeter. And some of the biggest challenges we faced was at the start of the season, we knew we wanted to be small because small sometimes equals faster. And in this game, if you cycle fast, you have an easier chance of winning. So initially, we wanted to be a 16 by 16 with a turret. And it just didn't really work out for us because the turret was too big and you couldn't really effectively fit a note through it. But we found out that if you have an intake like ours with a straight shot into it, you can be much faster than any turret robot and shoot farther back efficiently. And with doing so, we wanted a small drive base and we looked initially at the SDS work module, which presented good quality for us and looked nice to go with it. But the problem was we couldn't get the wheels out far enough. So with the, with the West Coast Swerve Drive XS, we are able to push the wheel out almost to the direct corner and then effectively get, with a custom plate, a falcon for the steer and a kraken for the drive motor. I, you might be the first team I've talked to that's running a Falcon Kraken uh, sword drive before. That's kind of interesting uh, on that. So um, overall, you know, looking, you mentioned you're trying to get in the sizing right. Um, going to the size, are you still happy even though you had to go bigger uh, in regards to the final size you ended up with? Seeing how well it's been able to perform, I feel like going smaller would have been much more of a defect than a helpful adversary. So I like this. It's been performing well, and I'm excited what it can do in the future. Sam, let's talk about the uh, intake uh, that you're running as well, too. I mean, your team is just absolutely having so much control on the notes. Talk to me about uh, what your intake is. And I love that, you know, you're running under the bumper intake, but it's like the full width of your uh, robot, which is so cool. Absolutely. Yeah, that was one of our first things we wanted this season uh, was the under the bumper intake. In the past years, we've always had the actuated intake, which always gets beat up and slammed around during the match. So uh, the under, under the bumper intake was a must have for this season. Um, one really unique feature of our intake is the it's full width. So the way we're able to do that is we have mechanum wheels on the outsides, which are able to guide the notes in if you have a come at it from the corner. And there's there's guide plates, Lexan guide plates that guide it into vertical rollers, which shoot it up into the shooter. And these are both ran by uh, a Falcon 500 for the vertical rollers and a Kraken for the main bar. Did you always have those like guide plates and the rollers in there or is that something that got added on uh, as you started to develop this? No, we uh, from the beginning that was that was what our prototype was and the best part about this intake was it worked us almost as soon as we got it made. So our prototype is very similar to this. Well can we see it in action and see what it looks like the intake note? Yeah. A very smooth uh, process on there. So much control. And that's something I think is so important with this year's game is just having as much control as possible with this as it goes into uh, your amp and shooter mechanism. So let's talk about what you have first for your shooter uh, on there as well and uh, what you're uh, running for that. So Levi, tell me more about uh, what your shooter is and why it's been working out so well for your team. 
Yeah, so at the beginning of the season, we knew we wanted a shooter that would be a top and bottom roller shooter because it, when we tried to do it side to side roller shooter, it was squishing the note too much and when it unsquished and deformed itself, it would deform itself and it wouldn't shoot straight. So we also made our plates that we have here alongside the shooter. We made them adjustable so you can move the shafts up and down. And what we found worked the best is starting with small wheels on one side and slowly making the wheels bigger on the to the right, but having the shafts angled down and up so that there's equal compression throughout the note. So when it comes through, there's equal compression, but the bigger wheels give spin to the note. And to go along with that, the feeder is on the left side of the robot, so when it feeds it, the note's already starting to spin in that direction. So it comes out with a spin and it makes it fly a lot straighter. It can shoot from anywhere behind the blue line, but consistently shooting just behind the notes seems to work pretty well. And Matthew, let's talk about that amp shot that you had as well too. Uh, I think this is something when I saw your reveal video that I was very much so wowed with is uh, really what that, that claw or arm or whatever you call it looks like is really, really cool. So let's uh, deploy that out and take a look and, and tell me more about it. Yeah, so when, when we went into the season, we knew that we wanted to have a good amp scoring mechanism because you get over double the points for that speaker shot when you're amplified. So um, we knew that that would be important, and we didn't really have a good prototype for the amp scoring mechanism to start. So we got the shooter design and we got the intake design. We were like, all right, we need to figure out a amp scoring mechanism. And so originally we had just one bar here, this one that's currently here, and then another one here, and then a grabber. And we found that that, with the robot as small and compact as it is, just wasn't going to work to grab it out of the shooter. So we went with this linkage with a chain here and here to link this bar and this bar here together so that they pivot on, on the same actuation. Which then, when you bring the shooter up, uh, you can grab the note out of the shooter like that. And then we would bring it up. And when you bring it up, we pr prototyped a couple of different ways to grab the note. One of them was this, and then the other one was two rollers, typical to what you might see on a lot of other robots. And the reason we went with this is because left to right on the amp, you get way more clearance if you just have this one, one grabber in the middle versus a roller that might be this wide. Um, and then you also get more clearance front to back because if you hold the note, if you hold the note like this, then you get, it can, it can bend all the way down to here and it will still go in. Or if you drop it like way out here, it'll also go in. So you get a foot of clearance front to back and a lot more left to right. So when I was watching yesterday in practice, it still looked like maybe a little bit of tuning still to do on it, but you've definitely locked it down here. What changed from yesterday into today? Okay, so the difference between yesterday and today is we were having some problems with the slop right here. So this, this slop right here, we would, uh, it was a lot sloppier before, um, and that was, in this chain, um, and so we we tightened up that slop a lot, which made the handoff between the shooter and the amp grabber a lot better. Yeah, this robot's just so cool to watch on the field. I love you know every year Roboteers, you just seem to bring like just something just extra special with it. I think this year there's a couple things with that, and one of them is your climber uh, as well too. So Caleb, uh, talk to me about uh, you know when I when I asked you earlier, I thought you were running gas shocks or something like that because the match ends and you're still uh, pulling back up. So talk to me about this uh, massive uh, uh, pneumatics uh, system that you have here and just how this climber system actually works. So when we started the season, we knew we wanted to climb. And before we had this giant air cylinder on her, we were, we were planning to climb with the arm. But in order to do that, we would have to have more than one Kraken driving this arm. And we put two on it, and then we tried to climb, and there wasn't enough torque to get the robot off the ground. And so after that, we resorted to the air cylinder, and it was, had enough to pull, but we couldn't get enough height with it. So we moved to the, just the edge of the carabiner, where we can pull all the way up on the chain. And can we see that climber deploy on and what that looks like? And it's the, the accumulator that you have on there, is that just for your climber alone? Yes. That so, giant air tank yeah. is mostly for the climber. We, all, we have one more pneumatic on the grabber to make it faster, but the reason the air tank is there is so we don't have to stick four more smaller air tanks somewhere in the robot. Are you able to get more than one shot out of it, or is it kind of a one-use thing per match? We, it is able to get more than one. You might max out at two, but if you miss, the way we climb, you, you don't climb anyway because of how late we do it in the match. 
Yeah, so talk to me about that strategy as well, too, to essentially climb up, and as the match ends, as T equals zero, you're still crawling up a little bit. Talk about uh, your team's decision to go that route. So we decided that with the motor, you can't, because when you at match ends, you get disabled, so your motor's not going to be going, but air, it's still pulling up. So we can cycle a whole match in the last five seconds, just scratch on the chain, hit the button, and then we just go up the chain after the match has ended. Well, Roboteers, what a phenomenal machine. You brought uh, a lot of great inspiration, I think, for the community to take out uh, from this as well, too. So good luck here at Central Illinois and throughout the rest of the competition season. Thanks for uh, such an awesome machine and congratulations. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.